Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would do this little video that I found very particularly interesting. And this is actually going to be an older video <laughs> that was released actually now, I believe almost a couple years ago or about a year and a half. <laughs> so this was the time frame overall for those of you that remember. And this is actually the reason why I started up <laughs> this new channel, I believe in the year 2020. Because, of course, after the Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder rematch had happened, we all know that, of course, Tyson Fury, that he pretty much dominated Deontay Wilder in that match. And, of course, a certain amount of Deontay Wilder fans, about a week after that fight had happened, they basically alleged that Tyson Fury, that he was cheating with his gloves and, you know, all sort of stuff when it came down to it. And, basically, they could not handle that their hero, Deontay Wilder, that he lost. And that's why, in my opinion, it's not good to be a major fan or even a fan in general of a lot of these athletes. Like I said, when it comes to this channel, I try to be as logical and objective as possible. But just overall to give you a little bit of a backstory of who got me into boxing and all in all, why I started to get into it, Mike Tyson was actually the first fighter that I really started watching, at least when you talk about old clips. Now, of course, I was not really around when he was fighting or I was not watching boxing when he was fighting because, of course, I was born in 1998. But just in terms of watching old film, I would watch Mike Tyson, and I always thought that Mike Tyson was a phenomenal fighter. He always impressed me very, very much. I loved his head movement. I loved his feet, and of course, his power always made him a joy to watch. But the problem always was with Mike Tyson is that if the game plan, the first game plan, kind of like a Deontay Wilder or George Foreman almost, although I would say that, of course, naturally talented-wise, he was more talented than those fighters and more skilled than those fighters. But this is why, all in all, when I just take a look at skill, you know, to me, accomplishments and winning by whatever means necessary. And when I say by whatever means necessary, of course, I mean on the fair grounds. I'm not talking about like what Antonio Margarito did in some of his fights. I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about just whatever means necessary, whatever you have to do to win. You know, whether you have to get the knockout, whether you have to outperform them, whatever you need to do. But the problem was with Mike Tyson is that he just could usually never win the biggest fights of his career. And Mike Tyson, you know, <laughs> for whatever reason, I think that there's a multitude of things there. But Mike Tyson, he really has been so worshipped overall, almost on like a God figure like level, <laughs> kind of like Muhammad Ali in the sport of boxing. When you hear the sport of boxing, there's going to be a certain amount of names that you hear that you just know immediately, even if you, you know, don't really watch boxing. And Mike Tyson is one of those names. Mike Tyson is one of those names to where, <laughs> you know, he's almost like the Michael Jordan or he's like, he's like, you know, maybe the Magic Johnson or Larry Bird of boxing to where people just know their names instantly, you know, basically intuitively. But Mike Tyson, in my opinion, what we're going to be talking about in this video is who would have won in a 1v1 matchup, of course, in a boxing match between Mike Tyson and Tyson Fury in their primes. And of course, Tyson Fury, when it comes out, and for those of you that don't know, I believe that he got his first name because of Mike Tyson. That's what his father, John Fury, named him after. So obviously, he probably had plans of him being in professional boxing for a very, very long time. But when it comes down to it, the big question is, how great is Mike Tyson compared to the other all-time great heavyweights? And how also, how great is Tyson Fury compared to that of a Mike Tyson and also compared to some of the other all-time great heavyweights? If you've seen some of my past videos, you know where I kind of rank Tyson Fury. But all in all, I'm going to be talking about it in this video, and let's get into it. Mm. Mike Tyson preparing for a comeback. So Tyson Fury came out stating that he would love to fight Mike Tyson in a exhibition bout. I mean, it's the old classic matchup, Tyson versus Tyson, right? Nevertheless, Mike Tyson actually sent him an offer. And Tyson Fury turned it down. And what Tyson Fury said, he stated, listen, man, if I knock him out, it's a lose-lose situation because if I beat him, they're going to say, you beat an old man, and they're going to hate me for it. Pretty much what Anthony Joshua said. However, there's more because he added to the equation. He said, what if he knocked me out? <laughs> it's a horrible look. And it's like, what? Hold on. Really? Like, Mike Tyson, his last fight, he pretty much fought a fighter he was supposed to knock out in the first 10 seconds. And he blamed it on his spinal because he was no longer the same Mike Tyson. How can you say... For those of you, of course, I remember this was when... <laughs> Tyson Fury whooped Deontay Wilder's ass a few months earlier and they were trying to completely tear down Tyson Fury and they're still doing that. 
they're still overall working on Operation Tyson Fury. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that overall they're still trying to tear down his name just like they are with certain other fighters. But right now their main operation, their main mission is to tear down Mr. Sewell Canelo Alvarez. But Tyson Fury is still the person that they have to tear down because they don't want those fighters to be remembered as all-time great fighters. You know, what if Mike Tyson knocked me out when he's 53 years old? And if you're asking me personally who I think would have won in a 1v1 matchup or, you know, of course, a boxing match between Mike Tyson and Tyson Fury, um, I think it would have been very particularly interesting. Looking at it on the surface, it looks like Mike Tyson is more skilled than a lot of other heavyweights. But when I take a look at Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury is extremely skilled. And I know a certain amount of people, they take a look at him and say, oh, no, what are you talking about? Tyson Fury is extremely skilled for his day. And especially with his stature, listen, I don't care what anyone says, but if any heavyweight, I don't care who it would have, who it would have been, whether it be Mike Tyson, you know, Rocky Marciano, Joe Lewis, you know, and now, of course, they, they were pretty much natural light heavyweights, so I don't even know if I want to, you know, talk about them. But even if you want to include, you know, the George Foremans, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Joe Frazier's, Muhammad Ali's, I don't care who it would have been, anyone would have had problems with the Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury overall for a heavyweight, especially for his size, very fast feet, very decent feet, very good head movement, somewhat of defensive responsibility. Of course, I don't think it's on the Floyd Mayer, the junior level, but Tyson Fury is one of those guys to where he's just extremely physically and intellectually gifted when it comes to boxing. And that's why, in my opinion, he's been able to, you know, outdo all the boxers that he's been able to face. That's why he's undefeated. So to answer the question, who do I think would have won in a boxing match between Tyson Fury and a prime Mike Tyson? I think it would have more, more than likely been Tyson Fury. I think that Mike Tyson would have had a chance, but if the fight would have been past five rounds, Tyson Fury more than likely probably would have incrementally broke him down. And overall, if he was able to hit him the same way that he was able to hit Deontay Wilder, there's a decent chance that Mike Tyson also would have got stopped. You said you're the greatest fighter of all time, and you worried about... Keep in mind that Mike Tyson was a person that also had problems with James Buster Douglas' size, Lennox Lewis' size. All right? A uh, 53-year-old man knocking you out. So what that told me is his confidence is pretty much fake. His persona is pretty much fake. All that is just basically sell the fight and... The fact that he tapped... Well, I can tell you all in all fast 40 years later <laughs> that his confidence is not fake. Tyson Fury believes that he can beat any heavyweight out there. But I do believe that there is a little bit of that, you know. Ty Tyson, Mike Tyson is Tyson Fury's hero, I believe. And, you know, is it possible that maybe he was giving him a little bit of a boost? Maybe. Do I think that Tyson Fury actually believes that Mike Tyson would be able to knock him out? Not a chance. I, you know... You know, maybe I'm wrong about that, but like I said, Mike <laughs> Mike Tyson, you know, he's 50-something years old. All right, it just is what it is. With his glove, that's how he gains confidence. And, and of course, overall, here's what Aki TV, you know, is alleging, and they'll still allege this to this day, that Tyson Fury was, you know, quote-unquote tampering with the glove. But for those of us overall, once again, that are realistic and logical and objective, we all know that that narrative was bullshit for the, from the get-go. That's how he gained power against Deontay Wilder and every time he stepped up. So what is your take on Tyson Fury claiming that he don't want to take the fight because, you know, what if Mike Tyson knock him out? Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Mike Tyson has a chance to knock out Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury isn't that good of a fighter. You just mentioned... <laughs> These are the type of delusional cats overall that are on this type of show. Or that all in all subscribe to this Aki TV network when it comes down to it. That's why, you know, I can't take anything with these guys say seriously, man. Because they're just idiots. <laughs> like I said, you know, I'm not sure if they 100% believe what they're saying, man. But come on, man. Like, that's just ridiculous. In the Otto Wallen fight, when he went life and death with Otto Wallen, a fighter that we never heard of before. You know? Well, for overall, to give a little bit of background on Otto Wallen, actually, who I believe is a Swedish fighter. Actually, a very decent boxer. If you've seen him overall against Dominic Brazil, and Dominic Brazil, in my opinion, he's never been a good fighter, but or at least a great fighter. But he is athletic. You know, he can punch. Otto Valin was able to completely embarrass and outbox Dominic Brazil. Otto Valin, he went in, the, in there, I think, as an underestimated uh, fighter. And, of course, Tyson Fury, he may have a little bit of problems with the shorter and guys, you know, that can get on, get on the inside a little bit. That's also what would have made the Mike Tyson fight very interesting to see if Mike Tyson would have been able to actually get in there and maybe hurt Tyson Fury to the body and hurt him overall and maybe catch him. But 
you know, it would have been interesting. You know what I mean? Tyson Fury is really overrated, my brother. He's he's the heavyweight version of Paula Malignaggi. You know, he all he can do is... <laughs> he's the heavyweight version of Paula Malignaggi. These are people that have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Now, Paulie, in my opinion, you know, a lot of people, of course, like to trash him. Listen, in my opinion, Paulie would be in the Boxing Hall of Fame because he was actually a legitimate two-weight division champion. And in my opinion, if you do that, then at least, you know, you probably do deserve to be in the Boxing Hall of Fame. And I'm not talking about one of those bullshit titles that Tang Davis went after against Mario Barrios, one of the, you know, regular titles. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about an interim title. Paulie Moss Nagy was actually a legitimate two-weight division champion where he won one of the official belts at 140 and 147. But it just is what it is. Anyways, but no, Tyson Fury is not, he's not this generation's point Maj Nagy. What he actually is, he's pretty much this version's Muhammad Ali. It is what it is. And I know a certain amount of people are going to say, oh, you're crazy. How can you say that? Listen, when you take a look at Tyson Fury, and when you take a look at Muhammad Ali, you know, Tyson Fury for his day, he is the best mover. He is the best defensively. And when you take a look at Muhammad Ali, it's not, I would say that Muhammad Ali, in terms of athleticism and in terms of speed, yeah, he probably was a greater all-around athlete for his day than what Tyson Fury was. But when you talk about overall in terms of movement and in terms of overall trickiness and a multitude of things that they could do, Tyson Fury is the Muhammad Ali of this day. At least when you compare him to the other heavyweights. But he can't. He has no power. You know, he can box, bro. He's tall as well. But he has no power. You know, he's a weight. He has no power. But, we, you know, we, we've already seen that. <laughs> That's wrong. Well, he, he, he came in 275 pounds to fight to fight against Deontay Wilder, bro. The man, where's the skills at? You trying to go up to 275 pounds so you can have an advantage. But where's the skills? Yeah, but when it comes down to it, like I said, you know, so many people, they, they, they can bring that up all they want to. But no one feels bad for Deontay Wilder overall that Tyson Fury has the weight advantage because Deontay Wilder is a person that, once again, he was he had a 50-50 shot every single time to possibly beat Tyson Fury because he has that one-shot knockout power. You know, it just is what it is. You know what this fight is basically is, in my opinion? It almost would be like a Marvin Hagler versus Tommy Hearns. Where, yeah, Marvin Hagler clearly in stature is bigger than that of a Tommy Hearns. But Tommy Hearns, because of his height and reach, he can compete with the other person. You know, when it comes down, and on top of that, he has a shot that can knock out a horse. <laughs> it was the same thing. That's why a lot of people actually compare Deontay Wilder to that of a Tommy Ernst, because he's very slender, tall and skinny, and he has that right hand that can knock out anything. Because he had a tamper, right? You know, if you are, if you have all the skill in the world, why you have to tamper? But I'm gonna tell you why he had. But he didn't tamper. The tamper with the glove, because I actually got the answer. Um, the reason why he... You don't got no answers. <laughs> As Kanye West would say, you you don't got the answers. <laughs> ...with his glove because he don't have cojones. He stay eating that contaminated meat, that wild boar, that doesn't allow his cojones to grow. So everybody know, all the bodybuilders out there and stuff like that, you know, if you take a lot of steroids, it stop your cojones from growing or producing whatever, right? We're not going to get into all of that, but... <laughs> All I'm saying is Tyson Fury doesn't have cojones because he stayed in that wild boar that contaminated me that didn't allow his cojones to grow. So he have to do things like that and utilize cheating tactics whenever he step up in competition. You know what I mean? Nevertheless, this dude overall has suckered so many idiots or whatever into his channel. It's really unfortunate that a lot of people either A, believe in this shit or have actually gotten suckered into this. But it just is what it is. Like I said, not not everyone overall is the sharpest tool in the shed. And I'm not, you know, once again, I'm not, I've never been this person that just brags about, you know, me being super duper intelligent or anything. I don't think that I'm this Albert Einstein. But I know what I'm talking about when it comes to boxing. It just, like I said, any person overall who had an ounce of common sense knew that Tyson Fury did not tamper with the gloves. You know, Tyson Fury is pretty much exposed now. And the fact that he's afraid of a 53-year-old man knocking him out. Like I said, AJ said, if I knock him out, they, everybody going to hate me for it, right? That's a that's a legit reason. I respect that 100% because when you do go in an exhibition bout, you might not be able to... Like I said, you notice all in all that they respected Tyson Fury until they realized he was going to be a threat. And that happens a lot in life when it comes down to it, that a person, you know, if they think that, you know, you're doing better than what overall they thought you would, 
then eventually you may see them, you know, give a little bit of a different energy towards you than what they once originally did because a lot of people don't want you doing better than them. And, you know, these guys, once again, they have a very big pro-racial narrative. They never foreseen Tyson Fury coming back and becoming the best heavyweight in the world once again. They never foreseen that. And now they have to try to tear this monster down. Hold back. You know what I mean? Like, it's boxing at the end of the day. If he's 53 years old or not, he's still going to come to take your head off, right? So, nevertheless... AJ gave a legit reason, and I respect him for that. But Tyson Fury, on the other hand, he want to talk about, oh, what if what if Mike Tyson knocked me out? You know what I mean? It's like, what? You've been talking about you the greatest? You want to challenge Muhammad Ali for that title, and you over here eating contaminated meat, you know, taking steroids, tampering with... Listen, I'm just going to state this. I, I can't say that Tyson Fury necessarily is greater, at least at the current moment in time, than a Muhammad Ali or some of the other guys that I put up there. But he's he's almost there. Like I said, Tyson Fury, would I say that he's greater than Mike Tyson? Yes, I would. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I know a lot of people, they would heavily disagree and they say, oh, well, what are you talking about? Mike Tyson just lost too many of the big fights in his career. Now, because of what he was able to accomplish and because at one point in time, he was completely unified. And, you know, he was able to beat Michael Spinks and a couple of other decent guys. You know, I, I give him a lot of credit. But, I mean, a lot of the guys that Mike Tyson beat, I mean, come on, are we really going to remember those guys? At least Tyson Fury, at least he beat some of the big kingpins of his day. You know, he embarrassed Vladimir Klitschko. He embarrassed Deontay Wilder every time he got in the ring with him. The glove. And if he beats Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk, I mean, there's pretty much no one left. Utilizing cheating tactics, dirty tactics during the fight. You got a complexion for the protection and all of that. And you afraid of a fit? And these are the, like I said, it's very unfortunate that a lot of people do fall into this shit. This is why I started this channel. Because a lot of these guys, when it comes down to, you know, they'll basically allege, oh, well, these fighters, they got the complexion for the protection. That's the reason why things end up the way that they do. Listen, are there certain fighters that have the complexion for the protection? Yes. And, of course, Tyson Fury, you know, he is a Caucasian when it comes down to him. But at the end of the day, he did not beat Deontay Wilder, and he's not ranked so highly just because he's a Caucasian. He had to get himself there the hard way. Three year old man to knock you out? Come on, man. You got what you asked for. Mike Tyson sends you an offer and you turn it down. Like I said, this man pretty much, his whole character is made up. It's a fictional character. They try to make... No, whose character was made up was Mr. Deontay Wilder with that pro-black shit. That's, that, that was the made-up character. I told people heading into that fight and I had so many Deontay Wilder fans tell me that I was wrong and I was right on the money the whole entire time because I seen right through that bullshit. Deontay Wilder could fool his dumbass fan base like Aki TV. He ain't gonna fool me. All right? It is what it is. All that was was a gigantic act because he did not want to admit at first that he got his ass whooped. And it finally took him after the third ass whooping that he said, wow, this dude is just better than me. And I could have been spending all this time improving. And now it's probably too late because Deontay Wilder, to be quite honest with you, his career is probably over. <laughs> I mean, when you get knocked out the last two times the way that you did, especially in that third fight. I mean, Deontay Wilder, like I even heard a channel say, I believe this channel is called Mo Boxing. Very, very big Deontay Wilder fan. British, actually, I believe. But he stated overall that Deontay Wilder actually didn't get knocked out in the third fight. And, you know, he got up at seven seconds. Dude, if Deontay Wilder would have been allowed to get back up in that 11th round, he would have been dead. A rocky in real life, old media is, and it backfired on their... And this is overall another reason why I like to review these videos, because they always say this shit about certain Caucasian fighters especially. Or certain fighters that may be great, they say, oh, well, you know, they're trying to create a Rocky, you know, with Tyson Fury. Like, people try to act like Tyson Fury has never accomplished anything in his career. They try to act like this dude is another, like, you know, Tommy uh, Morrison or, like, another Jerry Cooney or some shit. Like, Tyson Fury is the best and the greatest heavyweight of this era. It just is what it is. Because he got exposed. His career is ruined. His legacy is ruined because he will never be able to climb the, the realm of greatness because you cannot be a great... He already did, but you're going to try to tear him down as much as possible. And basically the new narrative overall that they've been on is that, oh, well, Tyson Fury, he's not as skilled. He can't compete with those guys. Like I said, so Operation Tyson Fury is still a full go. If you cheat on more than one occasion, taking steroids, which that's a fact... You know, he got suspended for two years. That's a fact. The wild boar is just an excuse. Then he threatened a 70-year-old man. And then Glovegate situation and accusation that old media... And you notice that none of these allegations came out until Deontay Wilder, until he got his ass whooped. Because they were so in love with that man. And now they got their feelings hurt. 
trying to cover up. And I'm not saying that maybe there's not some truth to the steroids. I, I don't know. But like I said, steroids to me are always just eh anyway. Because like I said, I think a lot of these fighters are on steroids. It's very clear that Deontay Wilder was probably on something as well. Maybe it wasn't steroids, but he was on something to bulk himself up for that third fight. <laughs> so it is what it is. Because Tyson Fury got the best hope insurance in the world. He got the complexion for the protection. Like I said, time and time again, that hope insurance is better than Geico. It cover everything. Yes, brother, you're right, man. You cooking, Aki, man. You cooking. Yeah, you cooking, Aki. <laughs> This dude is such a fucking idiot. <laughs> but these are the brain dead types of people overall that really follow these channels. Like, they actually truly believe in this shit. Oh, well. They need to start calling you Chef Aki around here, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, for uh, real, brother. That, man, you're doing a great job. I'm cooking that, that wild boar. I'm cooking that wild boar yeah. on Tyson Fury. But yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> I see you doing a great job, you know, exposing the truth, my brother. So yeah, exposing the truth, and then look, look what happened in the third fight. Yeah, allegedly exposing the truth. These guys are, these guys overall, man. Goddamn. Just keep up the great work, Tyson Fury. Like you said, tamper with his glove more than one time. Tyson Fury took steroids more than one time. He's a well-known cheater in the sport of boxing. Also, not to mention just his uh his cocaine usage. Using drugs, you know what I mean? Um, he's not a role model. He's definitely not a role model, man. Athletes are not supposed to be a role model for you. And it just is what it is. That's why, you know, when it comes down to it, I, I don't give a fuck about what, what any of these athletes do in their personal life. Like, whenever I talk about Novak Djokovic, especially in tennis, people always say that, oh, he's not a good role model. I don't give a fuck about how good of a role model you are. I don't look up to these athletes. I don't give a shit what they do <laughs> when it comes in, in their personal life. All I care about, if I have to analyze you as an athlete, what did you do in your career? I don't give a shit about how nice or how not nice you are. And a lot of these guys, when it comes down to a lot of these athletes anyway, they present an image in uh, overall, you know, <laughs> in uh, you know, in front in front of the camera that they really aren't in real life anyway. You know, a lot of celebrities do that. I mean, shit, take a take a look overall at how many people overall, you know, they end up being you know actual monsters behind the TV screen. Take a look at Kevin Spacey, for example. You know, take a look at R. Kelly. Well, of course, R. Kelly. There's been allegations against him for years upon years upon years. You know, Bill Cosby, you know, whoever else you want to mention. And, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for exposing him pretty much. Subscribe below if you're trying to get smart about But anyways, that's really about it for this video. I just thought that I would talk about that because I thought that that was a very particularly interesting conversation. But anyways, Tyson Fury, in my opinion, he is clearly one of the greatest heavyweights, in my opinion. I certainly would have him in my top 10, to be honest with you. I'd probably have him in my top five to top six. Some people would say, well, why would you rank him there? Because when I take a look at Tyson Fury's skill set, I actually do believe that he is heavily skilled. It does look a little bit raw here and there, but Tyson Fury, he adjusts to whatever fighter that he needs to. And on top of that, besides Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk, he's pretty much beat every great heavyweight fighter of his day. And you have to give Tyson Fury a lot of credit for that. So anyways, when it comes down to that, that's pretty much about it for this conversation. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.